Time Walk with Me. Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Walk with Me. I tried to do this video unscripted, but it sucked, so now I'm reading from a script. This deck is commanded by Tamio, Inquisitive Student, who I got from a very lucky pack a few days ago. Tamio is a 0-3 Moonfolk Wizard with flying who costs just one blue mana to cast and gives you a clue token whenever she attacks. Then, whenever you draw your third card during any turn, she gets exiled and returned to the battlefield under your control transformed into... Tamio, Seasoned Scholar. This Tamio is a planeswalker who enters the battlefield with two loyalty counters, which doesn't seem like much until you realize that it really isn't much. But she does have a plus two ability, which gives all creatures attacking you until your next turn minus one, minus zero until end of turn, which keeps her safe from any number of one-powered creatures. Fifteen squirrels might be able to take down the biggest Eldrazi, but they don't stand a chance against Tamio, Seasoned Scholar. Her minus three ability returns an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and if it's green, you get a mana of any color. Then her ultimate ability, which costs seven loyalty, lets you draw half your deck and gives you an emblem that says you have no maximum hand size. All by herself, Tamio Inquisitive Student contains what she needs to flip herself over in four turns, and the Seasoned Scholar takes four turns to get her ultimate online. Not Ultima online. That means if nobody stops you and you get no help, you can make the ultimate happen by the seventh turn. But we know that as soon as a Planeswalker hits the table, all eyes will be on her. So the strategy is to defend Tamio and get her loyalty up to 7 much sooner so we can have a huge hand and no hand size limit. Maybe win the game too, if we're lucky. A good way to get more loyalty counters on a Planeswalker is to proliferate, so these cards all proliferate plus whatever else they do except for the last one, and I'll explain that one. Flux Channeler. This human wizard lets you proliferate every time you cast a non-creature spell. Thrumming Bird. This Phyrexian bird horror flies and proliferates whenever it deals combat damage to a player. Evolution Sage. This awesome dude proliferates whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Steady Progress. This instant keeps it simple. It just proliferates and replaces itself in your hand. Smell Fear. This proliferate spell potentially gets rid of a creature. Urban Daggertooth. This dinosaur proliferates whenever it's dealt damage, so it's a good blocker and a good target for Smell Fear. Roalesque Apex Hybrid. This guy proliferates twice when it dies. It also puts two plus one plus one counters on one of your creatures when it enters the battlefield. Serum Snare. This proliferates as long as you return a non-land permanent with mana value three or less to its owner's hand. Vivisurgeon's Insight. This gives you three cards and proliferates for just five mana. Adaptive Spore Singer. This Phyrexian Druid either proliferates or gives a creature plus two plus two in Vigilance until end of turn when it enters the battlefield. You'll probably want to proliferate though. Canker Bloom. This is a creature that you can sacrifice to proliferate or destroy an artifact or enchantment. Contagious Vorak. This Phyrexian Boar Beast makes you look at the top four cards of your library, and then you can either reveal a land from among them and put it into your hand, or proliferate, then put the other cards on bottom of your library. Thirsting Roots. For one mana, you get a basic land in your hand, or proliferate. Unnatural Restoration. This puts a permanent in your graveyard into your hand and then proliferates. Venomous Brutalizer. For just a little bit more mana, this Phyrexian Knight comes with a proliferate ETB trigger. Tainted Observer. This lets you pay two mana every time you get a creature onto the battlefield to, prolif to, blah, 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 to proliferate. A hard word to say. Tezzeret's Gambit. Draw two, then proliferate. And you don't have to pay any blue mana to cast it. Contentious Plan. Proliferate, and then draw a card. And Clock Spinning. This is the one card in this category that doesn't proliferate. For one mana, you can put another loyalty counter on Tamio. For four, you can do it repeatedly. To get Tamio to grow up big and strong, you have to draw, so these cards help you with that. Wizard Class. This enchantment only draws you cards when you level it up to level two, but its level one and three abilities are pretty nice too. Shamanic Revelation. Shamanic? Shamanic? 
Oh well, whatever. Green is great at drawing cards based on your creatures, and this card also gives you life if you have something big. Battle Mammoth. If an opponent tries to do anything dastardly to any of your permanents, this elephant lets you draw a card. Karuga the Macro Sage. Since this is in the 99, you don't have to worry about its companion restriction. It enters the battlefield and then draws you a card for every other permanent you control with CMC 3 or more. Primordial Sage. This is a nice sized creature and the drawing is nice too. Later on in the game, it can help you get Tamio back out as a planeswalker if she's been killed. Champion of Wits. When you first cast this, it draws you enough cards to ignite Tamio's spark. Later on, it gets you a little ahead on cards. Fathom Mage. Whenever something with higher power or toughness than this human wizard enters the battlefield, it gets bigger and you draw a card. Urban Evolution. You get three cards and you can play an additional land. That's the beauty of Simic. Distorted Curiosity. Two cards for three mana is a good rate, and if someone has a bunch of poison counters, it's two cards for one mana. Cold-Eyed Selkie. If you're playing against a fellow blue player, this can get through every turn and draw you a card. Even more if you pump it up a bit. Outcaster Trailblazer. You can plot this and get a free mana when you cast it for free, and then you get to draw a card when a big creature enters the battlefield under your control. Not a bad deal. Recycle. This is a tricky one, but I think the way it works is that if you cast this first and then put something out that gets rid of your maximum hand size, then that downside of this card is gone. But even if I'm wrong, this is a great card for burning through your deck and playing many spells a turn. And Reconnaissance Mission. This enchantment draws you a card whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. Because Planeswalkers are so vulnerable in Commander games, I put in some cards to help protect Tamiyo. Gale's Redirection. This is like a counterspell that doesn't officially counter a spell, so it can be used to neutralize spells that can't be countered. Then it lets you steal them. Pause for Reflection. I put in a few fogs in case Tamiyo is attacked. Rewind. As long as you have the mana to pay for it, this is a free counterspell. Fog. Blessed Respite. Tamiyo Safekeeping. With this spell, Tamiyo protects herself. And Propaganda. <music> Devoted Druid. There's, a, there's an enchantment that turns a creature into an enchantment that makes this into infinite green mana, but I don't have it in this deck. We're not doing infinities. Bounty of the Luxa. Every turn you get either an extra draw or three extra mana. Burnished Heart. This is great for when you have the landfall creature out. It creates two more landfall triggers. Nissa, Steward of Elements. Once you have a good number of loyalty counters on this planeswalker, it's great for getting lands or big creatures from the top of your library onto the battlefield for free. Moss Diamond. Sky Diamond. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. This is worth including in any green deck, even if it's the only shrine, because three mana is the normal rate for a mana rock that taps for a mana of any color. And because it's an enchantment, it's harder to deal with. Incubation Druid. At first, this gives you a mana of any color a land you control could produce. Later on, once you've adapted it, or given it counters some other way, it taps for three mana. Wall of Roots. For two mana, this wall provides you with five mana over five turns. Marleaf Pixie. Arborleaf Grazer. This is a nice first turn play, letting you put a land from your hand onto the battlefield whenever it ETBs. Quandrix Cultivator. This turtle druid tutors you a basic forest or an island and puts it onto the battlefield untapped. And Mocking Sprite. Making all of your instants and sorceries cheaper is better than tapping for mana because you can cast two during a turn, and then that's like tapping it for two mana. Nefalia Smuggler. This is good for the creatures that have ETB triggers. Glasses of Urza. This is a great way to see if anybody has any nasty surprises in store for your planeswalker, so you know what to counter. Joel Rael Monvuli Recluse, or Joel Rael Monvuli Recluse, something like that. This difficult to pronounce human druid gives you a 2 2 cat whenever you draw your second card during a turn. And if you have a ton of cards in your hand thanks to Tamiel's ultimate planeswalker ability, she has a great way of taking advantage of it. Clever Impersonator. 
I like to include a few clones in every blue deck I build because if I have a creature that helps me, now I have two. This one is especially nice because it can enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent. Bio Waste Blob. This is just a really cool creature that can go out of control quickly in both numbers and size. Cyclone Summoner. This is Blue's version of a board wipe. I'm not big on board wipes, as you know, so I'll probably have to build a board wipe tribal deck one of these days, but until then, this is what I'm using. It ignores Tamiyo as long as she's still mortal. Alondra Sky Dreamer. This merfolk wizard, who is also ignored by Cyclone Summoner, gives you a 2-2 flying drake whenever you draw your second car card during any turn, and when you draw your fifth, it can serve as another great payoff for using Tamiyo's ultimate ability. Prologue to Phyresis. The primary win condition for this deck is to overwhelm people with creatures, but this introduces the possibility to proliferate poison counters on everyone and win that way. Ominous Seas. This is great in any deck that emphasizes draw. It gives you an 8-8 every time you've drawn 8 cards. Manifestation Sage. Here's a third payoff for Tamiyo's Ultimate Planeswalker ability. When he enters the battlefield, you get a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. Vesuvian Shapeshifter. Another good clone option, this one can switch creatures during your turn for 2 mana. And Bioessence Hydra. This Hydra mutant likes to hang out with planeswalkers. Its power and toughness are each equal to 4, plus the total number of loyalty counters on all your planeswalkers, and when you add loyalty to them, the Hydra gets that many more counters. It doesn't even lose them if your planeswalkers die or lose counters. It only gets stronger. Because of the landfall creature I put into this deck, I put in a few tutor lands. We got islands and forests, of course. Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Path of Ancestry, Terramorphic Expanse, Blighted Cataract, Simic Growth Chamber. I like using lands like this index where Landfall might be used. You can use its ability to bounce itself back into your hand, guaranteeing a Landfall trigger every turn. Memorial to Genius, Cryptic Caves, Nesting Grounds. This can come in handy if, if you have both Planeswalkers out at the same time, transferring loyalty counters from one to the other. Myriad Landscape. Mystic Sanctuary, Bant Panorama, Litjara Mirror Lake, Quandrix Campus, and Crystal Grotto. So that is it. That is my Tamiyo Inquisitive Student deck. Tamiyo Inquisitive Student slash Tamiyo Seasoned Scholar, that is. Tell me what you think. Give me your honest opinion, as long as your honest opinion is a good one, that is complimentary to me, and I'll see you next time.